welcome creative adventurers. I'm so glad you're here today. I'm Debbie Cohn with D. Cohn Designs. Today I have a fun and easy project for you. Have you ever wondered what to do with your leftover fabric selvages or fabric strips? Well, in this project, you'll be able to use them quickly and easily, no sewing involved. You'll go from these to this. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and tell a friend. That's the best ways that you can support my channel. Also, head on over to my blog at decombedesigns.com. There you'll find free patterns and lots of quilting inspiration. If you like this project, which uses fabric selvages, I have two more videos I'll put in a playlist and link to them at the end of the video. These videos give you ideas for several more fabric selvage and fabric strip projects. For this easy home decor item, you're going to need the following items. You'll need a metal form. You could use a straw form or even a styrofoam form, but for what we're really going for, you'll want something like this. It's only half. It's not a full round. I got this at my local dollar store. You'll need something to cut your strips of fabric with. So I've got a pair of scissors. And then of course you'll need your selvages. This is some of my selvages right here. Next, you'll need something to measure your strips with. You want your strips to be mm, one and a half to two inches wide. It could be a little less, a little more. And then about eight or eight and a half inches long. So if you, if you have a measuring tool, you could use certainly like a quilting ruler like this. You could use a regular ruler. You could use your cutting mat like this. If you don't have a measuring device, a ruler, a mat, or anything like that, you could just use this piece of copy paper, standard letter size copy paper, and measure your strips across the top because we know that the standard size is eight and a half this way, 11 that way. About the width of a piece of copy paper is how long you want your strips. One of the things you can do to make this quick and easy is to mark on your cutting mat or on your ruler the eight and a half inch mark. So for example, on my cutting mat, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half. So it's about right there. So I could just lay out my strips from the bottom of my mat up to the bottom of my piece of tape and then cut off the excess. I could even do it where I lay them all out a bunch at a time and then hold it down and just kind of randomly cut a little bit past that. That would make cutting your strips quick and easy. The last thing you might need is clamps to, or rubber bands or binder clips will work. Something to hold your strips together by colors as you're putting them onto your wreath form. This wreath form is about 14 inches. You can choose the size that works for you. This just happened to be what I found at my dollar store and I decided to use it. When choosing your selvages, you'll want to choose selvages that have mostly color. Unless you're going for a white or off-white combination in some way, you'll mostly want to choose those with color. For example, this one has lots of color even though there is a white on the selvage. That would work. This one has the selvage, but it's entirely color. The same with this skinny one here, that is a selvage, it's entirely color. These two I wanted to show you because they have fuzzy ends on them. I like that, I think it's gonna add texture to my wreath. You may choose to not use that if you'd like, of course. Here's another example of a selvage where it has white, but there's plenty of color on it. I don't recommend small ones like this. There's not enough color unless that's what you're going for. For this project, the width of the selvages is only somewhat important. Of course, the wider your strips are, the less strips you'll have to put in your wreath, um, but you might want a more variety of color. So just keep that in mind. Mine are going to vary, that's fine with me. I'm probably going to use somewhere between an inch or even three quarters up to about two or two and a half inches. The other thing to keep in mind is when you are tying your selvages, if the fabric is lighter on the back, it will make a little bit of difference in the overall effect of your wreath. So you'll want to keep that in mind as well. If you're looking for a lot of color, then choose bright or dark colors. The next thing is cutting the selvages. Now I don't, I'm not going to iron my selvages. You can, I'm not going to bother. The reason for that is because we are going to be tying them anyway, but if you prefer, then by all means, let's go ahead and iron them. The next thing you want to do is measure your strips. What I've done here is I've put tape on my cutting mat and I'm just going to lay my strips so that they're more or less on one end. They're lined up 
like this. Doesn't have to be exact. And then I'm going to come through with my scissors and cut the other end off. Pretty quick and easy. Doesn't have to be exact. That way I can do a bunch at a time. You could even stack them. It does not have to be perfect. This is a project that you could do with um, children as well. As long as they're able to easily hold a pair of scissors and have the dexterity to tie the fabric, then you could certainly do this with uh, preteens and teens. That would really give them something to put in their bedroom. A last option to consider before we start tying our pieces is you might want to trim the ends in a decorative way. You could use a pinking shears or you could cut a V in the fabric like this. I just folded it in half and I just cut a V, just kind of eyeballing it, so that all of your pieces have a, a banner type end or you could do it the opposite like this. How steep the angle is is totally up to you. So you've got a couple options if you want to make your ends look a little bit different than straight across. You've got when a, tying on your strips onto your wreath form, you could either work in, from the inside out. That way you won't be working over your work, or you could work in quadrants or sections, or you could work in a random fashion if that's what works for you and balance your colors as you go. I've decided I'm going to work from the outside in and we'll see how it goes. All you do is take your strip, loop it around, and tie. And then I push it up against one of the sections, trying to get the fabric more or less even. It doesn't have to be exact. <coughs> As you go, you want to look at your color placement and um, balance your colors if that's what works for you, or you could just do random assortment. It's totally up Here to you. You can see I'm about half done with it or so. I worked in sections looking to balance the colors. Blue, blue, green, green, yellow, yellow, print, print, really trying to balance it out so I don't have too much of one color or print in an area. But yet I'm not being too fussy about it. If they're near each other, that's fine. I can always add in other colors to balance it out. I didn't stick to one ring. I did some on the inner ring, some on the outer ring, and some on the middle ring. I'll continue to add the strips and finish it up. I'll come back with the completed wreath. When I got done with the wreath, I realized it needed a special something something. So I just took an extra strip of the pink fabric that I used throughout the wreath and made it into a simple bow using a twist tie and then a dab of hot glue for the center section. Of course, you could add whatever you want to dress up your wreath. I just chose something quick and easy. I just love the frayed edges of all of the selvages and scraps. It gives it that shabby chic vibe that I love. And there it is, all finished and hanging on my front door. It looks beautiful. What a wonderful welcome of spring. I hope you'll try making this wreath. It's fun and easy to do. Thank you for watching today's video. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, tell a friend, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.